I have a robot voice over here too. Hey everybody, it is a it's a dark, chilly March 22nd evening around midnight tonight. The rain comes in and it does not stop until all day tomorrow. They say we're going to get about four inches of rain, which is always like four inches. What the f- sounds stupid, but apparently it's a lot of rain. Once you start getting into inches, okay, that's a, it, it, only when you're counting rain is four inches impressive. <laughs> you know what I mean, Matt? Four, in, four, four inches of rain is equivalent to four feet of snow. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Matt is here. Good to have him back. How you doing, Matt? Hello, Francis. You know, you know, uh, I did not know. Did, when did you learn that about rain and uh, and snow? Uh, I've known it since I was a child. These are things that evade me. I don't know. Like I say, it is it is very impressive uh, amount of rainfall for, and that's what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. We'll see just how how crazy it's going to be for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The last broadcast night of the week. It is uh, Fleckus Friday. The first time we're going to be talking to Fleckus since uh, the last time, which was in December when yeah. he came by, and we uh, we discussed we discussed the the need to establish a Fleckus Museum of the Insane, or whatever the hell it was, where he can keep all of the exhibits from our time right now, like the black wheelchair Santa and everything else <laughs> that really is an indication of where we are mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and culturally. Um, well, he's going to be coming back here tonight, and yeah, we'll be kicking around some news items. We'll be kicking around some things that are going on, uh, but also I want to jump into this thread that not only have I been building for the last couple of days, but Fleckus has has retweeted into his uh, corner of the internet, so we will see what you guys and gals have contributed to memory hold news items. That is news, headlines, things that have... Really, you know, they, they carry a bit of intrigue with them, a bit of what you would believe to be importance, and then as soon as you hear about them, they're gone, or they're gone with little fanfare after something, I, whatever. We know why some things disappear, like when a good guy with a gun show, uh, shows up to stop a uh, shooting with a, a crazy person with a gun. Um, that That's something that usually goes away, or when the crazy person with a gun is is uh, of, a, of a certain demographic group that usually goes away memory hold memory holds of no use to us no use to us and then there's other things and there's just a good old-fashioned cover-up well we're going to talk about a lot of those tonight because not only is 2024 a year of some, of some incredible news stories that have already been uh, relegated to the dustbin of history uh, but I also just want to see what you guys and gals remember from over the years. So it could it, it could be from uh, last week. It could be from last century. It could be from last decade. It does not matter. And that is what I'm looking forward to tonight. And Fleckus will be joining us soon. Um, first thing I saw, Kate Middleton. All right, since we jumped in on this one. Did they find her? Uh, yeah, well, they released a picture of her walking or a video of her walking around with William supposedly and people are like this is not her she looks emaciated doesn't look right today there is another big headline that's out there that's actually trumping all of the news out of Russia right now which is ridiculous but it's still uh, if it's all true then it is uh, it's sad that she was diagnosed with cancer oh. and she she is now undergoing uh, chemotherapy oh, and that's uh, th- that's that's what they say that they've been holding back from and and what's being hidden, and that the cancer was discovered when she had that abdominal surgery back over the holidays. So, yeah, I was watching a video. I don't know who it was, but that's what they said. Something like that. You know, man, um, this is two cancer diagnoses now for the the Royals in the last couple of months, and it's just um, it's just odd, especially for everyday people who are always commenting on royal families and and we feel so disconnected from them and there's a natural hierarchy hierarchy in society and then in the world order that obviously we're completely punching upward and they're just looking down at us when it comes to 
just earthly geopolitics. But you also tend to think that, hey, these people um, would have access to all the cures for everything, that they would only ever die um, semi-natural deaths after a long, long, long lives. And here you have, what, what is she? Is she even in her 40s yet? Yeah, but she's married into it, though. Yeah. You know, it's not... Oh, so she wouldn't she wouldn't have privileges of Yeah, like her particular bloodline doesn't really matter. Well, I mean her Unless she, was she royalty before she married him? No, right? She I was don't. a commoner, as they call them in The Rabble? England? No. The Rabble, no, no, no. The other one. Uh the the, the American tourist brat Meghan Markle. She's a she's a member of the Rabble. I thought this one was uh a civilian before too. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I honestly, I don't know anything about the makeup there or lines of succession or or whatever. It's just um, we did cover the 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 missing headline, and now there's been successful successive updates to kind of um, put all this out there. So there's that. Uh, what else is there? Over the weekend on Saturday night, I'm going to. I'm going to re-premiere. I, I'm going to premiere the entire Megan Fox episode on to YouTube at night. Maybe the Collins Brothers episode on YouTube at night as well. I just got to remember if there's any any mention of certain medical modalities, um, things like that. I just got got to remember. But there's uh, there's plenty that is scheduled to go on. You know, Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and YouTube as far as shorts go. So we're just trying to create new um, new rhythms here, and that's all I have to say on that. All right, uh, here's a little bit more into the grab bag, and then we're going to start the show off. This one is <laughs> this one just just angered me a little bit, and also just made me scoff and laugh too. UN advisor says the white man has brought life as we know it to the verge of extinction. <laughs> And that racial harmony, this one is this one is good. This is really interesting right here. That racial harmony harmony is a fallacy. A United Nations youth climate advisor has a history of social media posts that call for the destruction of capitalism, claim terrorism is used as a Western smear to justify its imperialism, and attack white people for purportedly fueling humanity's extinction vis-a-vis -vis the uh, the climate crisis. Her Secretary General Antonio Guterres selected Pakistani American, hyphenated Pakistani American, Aisha Sadiqa, as one of his advisors to help accelerate the implementation of his climate action agenda, a 2023 UN announcement stated. And then this Sadiqa, she's out there talking about how the white man has brought civilization <laughs> to its knees. She's she lives in Bang in Bangladesh. She's from Bangladesh. Pakistan. 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 And uh, yeah, we want to talk guarantee about. Guarantee they pollute more than us. Oh yes, oh yes. You know, it's common to shit in the streets over there. You know, I, I'm actually fine with what she said. Let's because I would love to start. I would love to start by sending this snake woman uh, back to the harmonious brown paradise that is Pakistan. That's number one. And then let's get serious about setting some realistic living standards here especially in America again. You know where grades and merit and property ownership and citizenship and public decency are prioritized. That would be I would love to live around anyone who can rise up to those standards. I don't care about their color or their shape. I don't care about anything. I just want to stop placating hateful little rats like this girl who's been given the privilege to hyphenate her hyphenate her uh her place of origin in the world. Incredible. So, and speaking of citizenship, I had an email that was sent to me. Listen to this, especially Texas. Listen up. Hi, Frank. Texas SB40. And if you don't know, Matt, if you don't know, I mean, this is what the um, that state bill that uh, that empowers state and local authorities to en enforce the immigration law since the feds are mm -hmm. supporting the invasion. I just wanted to add my two cents regarding Texas law enforcement being able to arrest illegals. I'm married to a police officer who works in Dallas County. The police agencies have been informed that they are not to arrest any illegals. 
as they will not be prosecuted by the district attorney's office. Okay, this is Texas. And I know you say it's, it's, it's Dallas, it's, it's a big city. It's right, that's what I'm saying. That there is really no, there's very few pure sanctuaries away from this madness because wherever they congregate, this is what happens. Um, let's see here. I'm sure that the district attorneys in the other major liberal cities in Texas have put out the same info so they can pass all the laws they want to stem the flow of illegals, but it doesn't mean anything if they can't be enforced. If you read this on air, don't use my name, and I don't want this to come back on me or my family. Thanks for all that you do. And um, so, yeah, you want to think, you want to talk about federalism. So the this, the, the the federal government has completely abdicated, abandoned, and actually reversed its interest in border um, border security. And when I say reversed its interest, it means they are interested in opening the border and making sure that we are the most uh, unsecured and in danger place on earth right now. And, um, and that is one of those things where, okay, well, the feds are doing their thing, and now it's up to the sovereign states to do their thing. So here's... Texas, one state of four on the border that's doing a little something down there and then going down in size through these Russian dolls over here are the liberal cities inside of the only state that is taking a little bit of action down there at the border. And the liberal cities are still saying to their police, uh, you know what, I know that the state government is doing this, is doing that. But please, uh, don't make any arrests because the DA is not going to go after anybody. So it, there, there's no uniform effort anywhere until you... The, the clean-out has to be so thorough. It has to be so thorough at the smallest levels, at local government levels, regional. Then you go state. Forget about federal. I think fe the, the, it, the quickest that the states clean themselves up so they can just wholesale start ignoring the federal government that is the only hope if there is a hope at all because this is incredible so that's just um that's coming in from dallas police right there the da is telling the sheriff's department i guess don't even bother don't even bother wasting your time because they're not getting charged so and then over there in in russia we've got last i checked at least 40 dead as a gunman opened fire at a Moscow concert hall and supposedly, get this, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. They did. ISIS. I don't... Listen. ISIS in Russia. ISIS. Now, I'm not... Uh, it's going to be very angry. Well, whatever that is, you know that the response is not going to be... It's not going to be with uh, mittens on or kit gloves. Does this get sympathy for Russia as far as the Ukrainian situation goes? Uh, I don't I don't know. I think anybody with a beating heart would look at this and say that's not good. It's not like I mean we're talking about grand grandparents and grandchildren who are just just shot down in, in heaping piles of bodies. I'm telling you, just don't 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 click through anything. Don't click through anything. The image every day a new horror on the internet. I'm starting to think that I need to expand my Lenten promise of being more pleasant on the internet and actually find a time to, I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to to take things completely out of my life without having to at least go on the internet for, to, I have to know, I have to know what I'm doing because I'm telling you, it's, there's nothing, nothing here and this and the squatters shit, I'm telling you, dude. I, I feel like I'm waking up every 25 minutes checking the ring cams. The last place I worked, there was a squatter in the apartment there. I've got some things to bring out. I've, I have some, I have some text messages that I were sharing. I was sharing with a uh, a friend of mine who does a lot of property management in the city. And ever since all the reporting, and especially all of the calls to action that like a lot of these, uh, there's this one very popular video that went around the other day. But I'm sure there's many, many more. It's probably just through, you know, word of mouth, not involving the internet. Uh, a lot of illegal immigrants, a lot of junkies, a lot of bums, a lot, just, just a lot of low lives. They are, they're getting the word out there that in America, there is such thing as squatters rights. And there are so many, what they say, abandoned houses. 
that houses that are for sale, houses that are owned. We're not talking about crack dens where the it's dilapidated shanties. Yeah. We're talking about houses that are maybe passing through ownership or somebody's trying to sell it or Airbnbs. They are they're getting the word out and there is a literal infestation that is happening right now. Yeah, well, I've thought about doing it, but not like to a house that someone's living in because there's it, it differs. It's different in each state. If you occupy it and if you like do pay the electric bill or whatever, I think in New York it's like I don't know, maybe like seven years, maybe a little longer. If you do that, you, 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 you legally you, own the house. You thought about doing it? What are you not talking? here, like upstate where there's like a, an abandoned <laughs> farm or something. I'll just go fucking live there. I'll have all the power turned back on. I'll pay the bills. And in New York, it's like You're seven years. If you do that, then that's it. The house is your house. You own the house. When you say abandoned farm, you're talking about a plot of land that has no owner. That whoever owned it died, and, and it didn't belong to the bank, and no one ever came and seized it. Or there's if you, shit, there's uh, stuff like that. I probably. would be okay. I, I would be open at least yeah. for people walking onto land that has no owner. But maybe has some kind of a standing structure, especially in some rural area that you just go in there and you just start putting things together. You manage. I, I would be totally fine with it. That actually feels natural. Feels natural. I mean, w yeah. You know, I, I, I definitely don't care about tax uh, paying property taxes. Well, well yeah, no, nah, you just pay like a power you know, bill or something, and then if yeah. you continuously live there and occupy it and pay the bills for like. Seven, maybe Connecticut is seven years. No, I think Connecticut's like three years. Because, you know, pro you, we talk about squatting, and that is just a, it's an attack on private property. Property taxes is an attack on private property as well. That completely undercuts somebody's ability to own property. Because if you don't pay those property taxes, the government's going to take it away. Why? Because they created the land. They created the soil and the streams. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous what we put up with and we think is normal. All right, all right. Let's get this one started off because Fleckus is going to be on with us in about four minutes. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a good one. And remember, we are jumping off at the intermission to quitefrankly.tv and pilled. So plan ahead because with Fleckus on, with Matt on, with it being Friday, there's plenty to talk about. It's a lot of fun. And all of these memory hold items, they have been submitted by you. I'll have a few to, uh, to add in myself, but still. Let's get this one started. Go ahead, Watchtower. This is the Joker speaking. You're tuned in quite frankly. When you see the ants, remove your pants. <laughs> You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? Let's ride! Okay. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to have you on. And remember, I would love to get a lot of your super chats on the um, red on to the air. Go to quite frankly superchat.com. You want to know where it is? Where is it? Quite frankly superchat.com. Here it is. Flash 
your camera at that QR code. Bring you right to it. Go ahead. Five, four, three, two. We'll keep this up a little bit every once in a while. So you can send that in, quite frankly, superchat.com. Get your, um, especially when we get to memory hold items. I want to hear what you guys say on the fly. Okay, well, it's been a little bit of time. It's been since Christmas, but of course, time flies when you're having fun or when you're just dodging bullets, dodging howitzers, dodging nuclear bombs. And we've got our good buddy here, Fleckus. Fleckus talks. It's Friday, and it's Fleckus Friday again. How you been, man? You hear me, Fleckus? Hello? Oh, 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 it's still connecting the audio. Shit, hold on. Just remember, he's in Florida. This takes a while. Wait a second. Oh, yeah. Has no, to here travel. he is. Now he's back. Everybody's favorite cultural commentator. Hello, Mr. Fleckus Talks. How you been? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, he's no. He's pretending to talk. We don't hear you yet, Fleckus. Just make sure you got the right uh, microphone uh, selected in your... Look at that beard, man. It's a majestic. That's it's a majestic. fucking glorious. It is. It is glorious. <laughs> it looks like you know, I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would love to see? I would love to see Fleckus uh, uh, dressed up in a Civil War uh, uniform. Yeah. yeah. Any side. Uh, you know what? Fleckus, you, l l let me tell you, how about this? Give me a call back. Sometimes just a calling, calling back uh, works. Hold on. Let's end the call and click right back in. Here you go. I'm going to end it for you. Sometimes this works. I don't know. Oh, I have a couple of stories I wanted to start, but I, I can't do it without him on because I think it, he'll be fun to... Uh, he had to have commented on it. Do you remember that? You remember that chick? Did you ever get the um, that story about the the woman that worked at the, the police department, she banged everybody at the police department. Yeah, the whore. <laughs> yes. yes, that one. Uh, she just got awarded $500,000. For what, being a whore? She's the victim, of, of apparently. Of what, whoring? She's... She's a victim. Yeah. She was married. I, I know. I know that this gets nuts. Let's see um, Let's see if he's here. Hold on. It's Fleckus. It's connecting the audio. You hear us now? I can hear you now. Oh, there, he there you go. I'm telling you, can some. You guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes with the with the the Zoom, I don't know why, but just calling people back works. How the hell you been, man? It's been since uh, Christmas time. Everything well? Yeah, everything's good. I think I had like a, a frayed wire, maybe that could have been it. Well, you sound all right. Do you hear us? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you guys. Great. What's new with you guys? How it <sighs> goes? Everything good? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's fine. How's your mom doing? She's good. She's going to be probably watching this uh, tomorrow, probably. I don't think she's a live viewer, but she always catches up. So I'm excited for her to see it. Yeah, well, I hope that she's not. Uh, did you, has she had any problem with these these damn squatters up here at all? Not yet. Um, but I think that uh, next year she's going to be living in Florida for part of the year and going back. So it's going to be the first time the house I grew up in is going to be open for a few months but i think we're gonna have to have like a house sitter because of the squattering issues absolutely absolutely it's dude it's get, it's getting bad i mean i was every time that this was mentioned months ago uh i would cover it because it seemed like one of those things where you'd have to expect was going to get worse and now the last couple of weeks we're getting things like the uh there's this woman that was murdered mm -hmm. in new york her name was i forget what her name By was a squatter Two squatters that she went in on, uh, that she moved in on, uh, like in her house or whatever. She she uh, found them there. They beat her to death and stuffed her what? into a duffel bag. Yes, and oh. now they, they fled. They fled New York and and all that stuff. And I'm gonna start a business. If you got squatters, we'll come. We'll get them out for you. One way or the yeah. fucking other. That's kind. Of, that's like what I was thinking initially. It's like if it's a free for all and the squatters are in the house, maybe I'm a squatter now, yeah. and I'm not. I'm not such a fun roommate to be with. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. As long as you're not the homeowner, because that's the whole problem. The problem is that when a homeowner, like that that girl from uh, from Queens that we were we were reading about the other day. When she went in, there's these two low lives that were in there, and their low life girlfriend. They were in there, um, and she got them out. 
And the moment she changed the locks on her own house, she got arrested. Mm-hmm. So I guess if it's not your house, maybe you can go in there and, and, and cause some shit. Yeah, it, then it's and just, that house was a million dollars, too. It wasn't like it was some rundown thing. It was like a, it was a nice, um, you know, big single family house, I think. I saw, we covered that on the show today. Um, and yeah, once she changes the locks, now you're, now you're arrested. That, that was one of the craziest ones. And then I think the illegals are picking up to it, too, because there's that Venezuelan guy who's going viral. Uh, he went viral last week for showing his kid and saying, this is my meal ticket in America because I have this baby. They give me free food and free housing. Uh, he was saying that him and some of his African friends is what he called them. He said that they just discovered that you can seize uh, houses that are uninhabited and they kind of just realize that. And uh, they have seven together as a group. And then I think right now there's 1,200 uh, in Atlanta only. There's 1,200 houses with squatters in them. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it, this is not just a blue state kind of a thing. Obviously, it could be a, a city kind of a thing. Any city in any red state is going to be blue-leaning. So that's it, it's just it's incredible suicidal behavior. And you could say, well, it's stupid, but it's not if you were in the business of deterring people from owning property and you want to put an end to private property ownership we saw this with all the uh the the gobbling up of um of the 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 single the family homes during covid you know that that was that was nuts listen to this fleckus i have a, a friend of mine his name is mr b and he manages properties down in new york city so i got in touch he got in touch with me about how bad the squatting is getting just because of the news coverage alone now um, it, it's not a deterrent. It's actually emboldening people. It's like this. He, I, he, I got a text message yesterday around 1 p.m. He said, Frank, I'm getting dozens of squatters now. I said, because of the news, just like it just happened recently. He said, I keep getting calls from my supers about different people entering the buildings and apartments. Tenants will call up saying that they lost their keys in order to give them new tenants. It's overwhelming and it's just gaining momentum. And I said, what, what is this for like roommates or something? Is no, Some people just move in, but other people are, are actually giving their apartments to people. They'll go and they'll live elsewhere and they'll collect cash from these, these others. So he told him, he told me that his boss wanted him to go on knock on squatters' doors the other day and demand IV, uh, ID. He said, "No, hell, I'll, hell no, I'm not doing that." And I said, "Good, because you know the mental makeup." To, did you and Rap Boy talk about this when you discussed this situation? The mental makeup for some that of a person that is willing to do this, it has to be a person that is willing to literally do anything, because yeah. it is it is so beyond the, the pale. It's like someone who's homeless, but a little more capable and then a little more like cutthroat and conniving, willing to kind of exploit like homeless people will just sleep on a bench or sleep in the subway. Like these people kind of know the system. So they kind of have like that street rat backbone to them. Uh, It's a certain type of criminal for sure. And they know the rules are on their side and they can't really be like dragged out. So you're basically like if you go there to confront them, it can it's either going to get escalated or you're going to leave and they're going to stay it's like there's no real way to like go and confront and get them out and they kind of know that now which is no blames i'll be able to get them out well you show up with a couple rottweilers give them a choice you can leave you can walk away or you can get dragged out by the dogs dude i already i already said that this is it is it is beyond time now for the 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 old bronx tail treatment to to get the bikers out of the bar it's it's beyond it's beyond that and here's the other thing is this, this is really funny it's, it's funny it's awesome and it's also very uh typical because i i over especially over the four years that i was in in high school i came to know a lot of albanians and i know how albanians work okay mm-hmm. my buddy said he said that um he said that when the albanians buy any building in new york they get everybody out in a week I said, I, and I said, oh, dude, you don't even have to tell me. I love Albanians. He goes, no, no, they don't, they don't care about the law. They'll knock on the door. They'll tell these people they have 12 hours or else they're going to lose their legs. And, <laughs> and I said, yes, I fucking love that. Oh, I love the sound of that. Feels great, man. Oh, it's sad. It's sad that you hear things like that and you start getting pumped. You know, uh, the, the, because there's more honor in that and so, someone just like squatting. I mean, I know. Uh, that I Bronx know. Tale shit, that's gone. That's the new values. It's not that. Now it's squatting, and that's 
Bum. That's a new Bronx Tales value. Squatting. Yeah. The bum. Yeah. And, there, and there used to be a time, too, where, like, these uh, conflicts people would have with, like, a squatter type, it would get dealt with, and then, like, common sense and the law would be, like, kind of running parallel and on, like, the same page. And now it's, like, if you talk to a cop from, like, 1995 – and they came to your house and you said, hey, I own this house. This guy just walked in. He's living in here. Get him out. The guy would go, all right, you out of here. And it would just be dealt with. Uh, and now we have like this weird thing where common sense and the law are not on the same page. And then the police become enforcers of not the law. And same with the border, too. Like border years ago, like if people were rushing the border, the border patrol would be like, oh, stop. This is not happening. Now it's like the border patrol are agents to get the people in more efficiently. Like and everything just kind of fully flipped on its head out of nowhere. And back in the day when you could like have a common sense cop or something or a common sense border agent that could just like use their discretion. And it's like almost as a human element, like use their discretion on what's the best in the situation. And the law is pretty much on their side and on the side of their discretion. Now you have those same people enforcing like the opposite of the law and like enforcing it on to side with the criminals. It's actually like very dystopian, I guess I, oh, is the word. for it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you heard uh, what I was what I, the email that I read before you came on the air. We have a uh, person that that uh, married is oh, the uh, Dallas Border Patrol. Yeah. Well, no, a Dallas, a Dallas cop. Just a cop. Dallas cop so, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it's already passed Border Patrol's. Uh, they've already processed them. At that point, like you said, it's not about repelling invasion. It's about processing asylum seekers. They, you know, so, you know, you're at war with you're at war with uh, terms and and um, and and just it's all it's all a mind fuck because it's just you're we all see an invasion here. We see angry flailing men who are rushing the border, flipping everybody the bird and talking about how there's homes that, are, you know, free real estate. The free real estate meme all over the place, and um, and they have the nerve of saying, "Oh, uh, the people are just so ignorant. Don't they know anything about asylum seeking? Asylum from what? You know, it's just it's incredible. You know, people from ten countries away are walking across continents to pick us. Asylum is just like you got to go to the next door and knock on it. Everybody's coming from hundreds of thousands of miles." We're talking about galaxies away to come here for some reason. Oh my God, it's just nuts. Here, listen to this, Fleckus. I will. You remember the? Um, you remember the? That Tennessee police officer who had sex with like most of the, the police officer on staff. Did you hear about Dude. this story? The payout. Five hundred k. Dude, Matt, listen to this. Um, they she settled a lawsuit for five hundred thousand dollars. Megan Hall. She said that she was groomed by male police officers and she sued the city that she was working in. She allegedly hooked up with multiple colleagues, you know, second base, third base, home runs, grand slams, all around, uh, threesomes, you name it. She, multiple games at once. So wait, yeah. so they all groomed her or just one of them groomed her and turned her into a complete whore? <laughs> They're all, you know, she, was a, she was a, you know... She was a choir girl before she came to the, the police she was department. Probably a virgin when she got married. <laughs> exactly. She was a choir girl when she came to the police department, but they groomed her into what she was. Um, she blamed her actions on a troubled marriage and the police department. Wow. The board of mayor and aldermen voted to authorize the mayor to sign a settlement agreement between the city and the former police officer, the city insurance provider will pay the sum of $500,000 as a gross settlement, which includes court costs, attorney fees, and expenses. My, you can't retire on that, Fleckus, but geez, Louise. Take a few years off, at least. I never God. see a guy make $500,000 from being a whore. <laughs> we try. We try so hard. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody. Or imagine a guy using that excuse even, like, oh, I was groomed by the other guys at work. And it's like, <laughs> never would happen. And then you yeah, use that excuse as a lady, but then you also are able to, on the other hand, say, like, we need more lady cops. Women are just as capable as men. We'll get rid of the physical requirement. But, you know, like, that, like on one hand, they're just as capable and respectable as male cops. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, she was just a girl and these guys groomed her. 
Oh, I know. And, and to say that, you know, th- to be like the only the only girl at the uh, the police department to essentially say that, oh, man, well, all the guys there made me just so horny. It was their fault. And, and then, like you said, you can't turn that around and say, man, all my male, all my male, uh, you know, colleagues are just talking about sex all day, making me into a deviant over here. It just doesn't work. And uh, but it works for it worked for her. And that's um, I guess that's uh, that's equality for you. Like back in the day, the common sense thing would have came up and have been like, you want 500 grand for that? Like, nah, you're fired. Next. Like, what's the next thing on the agenda? But now, because everything doesn't make sense anymore and can't make sense. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you were talking about Border Patrol in like 1995 or 1997 or a cop in 95, 97. Anybody down there in El Paso in the mid 90s would have at least brought out a water cannon to repel these people. This, this, what the hell's going on down there? It's, um, but I guess looking back to the past and comparing where we are right now is becoming, uh, less and less helpful by the day. We understand that things are going, uh, you know, sideways and it's for a reason. But let's talk about other things. We both. Frank, can I add one last thing? Please add three. Um, in New York, uh, the, the male, uh, refugees or migrants, whatever they're calling them. They only have 30 days. If you're with a family, they'll give you shelter for longer. But if you're a single man, you only have 30 days and then you have to be out of the shelters um, and they're not allowed to work. So a lot of these guys who are here have 30 day wristbands, are allowed to live there for 30 days. And then at the end, they get dumped onto the street with no money. They usually, um, a lot of cases, they spend all the money they had to get to America in the first place. So they're kind of like pot committed to the American dream or whatever they got uh, pitched to them. Uh, but a lot of these guys are going to be on the street, third world people, people on the street. They're going to click up probably. And I think the uh, home invasion chart is going to go like that, unfortunately. That's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, we're 30, 35 miles away from the city over here. I wish we were 300 miles away from the city. Well, that don't matter. You know, they flew all of them in to Westchester Airport a couple of years ago. You think that stopped? I know. I, you're 100% they right. They probably stopped flying them in. They probably started bussing them in. Well, they flew, They fly them in, and then they bust them from there to Costco down the street, and then from there they're dispersed into Westchester County. I mean, we're getting oversaturated here. And I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. Uh, I think maybe it's a healthy sense of paranoia. There's definitely knots in my stomach. I feel like I'm waking up every half hour to check the ring cams. To uh, to make sure the knives and the and the shotguns are exactly in the most strategic places. I I, I know it's it's been well, we're lucky to have things be very quiet around us, but still the the fact that we're within a hundred miles of a major staging ground of a national invasion, we cannot categorize this as anything else. It's I mean it, it's it's one of many places right now. But um, it's a it's a major staging ground, so it's it's nuts. And and uh, Fleck is to your point. I think that a whole bunch of th- those gangs are already forming the pickpocket gangs and whatever. Oh, I mean, I, I'm sure that uh, home invasions will be next. Though who's going to report on it? Yeah, and then also like another kind of overarching theme I've noticed is like in the beginning. Remember in like 2017, 2018. Uh, like the left would always call the right like xenophobic when we try to do the Muslim ban or whatever at the airports, uh, and everyone would say, "Oh, you're xenophobic. You hate outsiders. You're you're, you're scared of uh, immigrants or whatever their talking points were." And they kind of like, and we would always be like, "What are you talking about? Like that's not the case at all. We just have certain standards, and people aren't compatible." And now they actually like, they were kind of gaslighting us, but now we're at the point where you look and see like a someone who's clearly from a different country or some you know country in Africa or something, you know, they just got here and you kind of give them a look like, all right, what's this guy up to? And you're suspicious of them. So they almost like made us the monsters they said we were before we actually were. Yes. It's the same thing with like DEI too. It's like, oh, you don't want DEI because you don't want to see a black person fly an airplane. And it's like, no, that's not the case at all. But then you know that DEI means uh, they're not going to hold people to the same standards and they're going to let some people go through and take some people down. And then you see a black pilot, and then you're kind of like, does this guy know how to actually fly an airplane? So they make you the, it's like a roundabout way to get to the end goal of like, oh, the right wing's racist. They don't want to see black pilots. But now I'm actually suspicious of black pilots because I know there's less standards than there used to be. 
I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it, and, I, and I've been saying the same thing. They are, they, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They're trying to bring that about. It's the same reason why um, we, you see things, I, probably the, 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 way that the, the reason why people were rushing the front gates of the White House during the Trump administration, especially during 2020. Uh, if there could only just be some situations where they can have uh, the Trump administration gunning somebody down, they never got that. If there could be any situation where they can get some women and children killed at the border, you know, you know, rushing the border and all of a sudden getting, you know, re- repelled by lethal, uh, lethal force or even active denial systems, something that, that that went wrong or whatever. They are setting, always setting people up to be the xenophobes, the racists, everything. They they need to create a situation where they can produce data for everything that they've only had to lie about being the case up until now. It's you're one hundred percent true, and, and that's actually been the biggest criticism from black and white people since the beginning of affirmative action. It's like, uh, all right, so now I go see my 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 black physician, and I'm going to, in in the back of my head, I'm going to wonder whether or not if my doctor was pushed through or had some kind of a uh, a standard that was lower than somebody else when perhaps they were the top of their class and they earned every bit of it. They they are the most racist, horrible people on earth, I'm telling you. I guess Asian doctors is a safe haven because if they still made it through even after, and same with like white doctors, I guess, like Asian and white younger doctors, you know that they really had to be actually good because they didn't, so they didn't get their spots lost to someone else. I will take it, yeah, give me the Asian doctors. Because they were, they they were, oh, they're always overachieving. Number one, and now number two, they're doing so well in the new world that they're being considered white, and so they, and they're doing better Happy than white people. <laughs> oh, oh man! So over the weekend, I started thinking about the um, the thought, uh, the the concept of memory hold news, because there's a lot of crazy. Now, here, I'm going to give you a few things. Here are just some of the things from. Uh, where the hell is this? this is just 2024 let's think about january miami shadow aliens remember the aliens in in miami the the all the like the hundreds of cops that went down there they said that there's 10 foot tall nephilim all over the place gone uh large batches of epstein documents unsealed we get that every couple of months uh let's see here the arizona rnc official caught bribing carrie lake this is all just from this year that we, we, we pulled together. But I want to open this up to the last however many decades. Um, three U.S. troops killed in Jordan. In February, we got King Charles diagnosis, but I don't think that was really memory hold. I think that that's actually the royals are still in, in focus with us, uh, in, in major focus right now. But um, whatchamacallit, that, that's when we had all of the, the tunnels the Jewish tunnels in 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 New York that just kind of went away. Um, uh, who the hell else knows? Right now, we just had the, the Haitian government collapse, cannibals eating people in the streets, uh, the, the 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 Boeing whistleblower. But what I wanted to bring up with you guys and um, Fleckus, I don't know if you have your retweet over there with you, so you can read some of your people's stuff. I would love to just start talking about memory hold news because. Uh, especially since I was watching a lot on TWA 800, which I think it would be the, the big one for me right now because it's so fresh in my mind. There's got to be so much out there. So I don't know where you want to start with this. Uh, Fleckers, let's, let's go with you. First of all, anything in your mind, anything that you always wonder, whatever the hell happened to that? It doesn't have to be anything geopolitical. It could just be like, what the hell happened to that? And if not, then go right to something from your audience. Yep, I have a couple here. One is more political. Like the, this is like a top five memory hole of all time, in my opinion. Obviously, Building Seven. Oh, <laughs> that's such a easy, good one, and it's so like visible. All like the source documents for that event were like videos, so you saw it, and that was like one of the first times that something like that happened. I actually have like a lighthearted one to start with. Uh, the Comedy Central roasts. Huh. Yeah, those kind of got memory hold. You don't see any clips from them uh, because it comes from a time when culture was not how they want culture to be now. But those roasts, I watched one the other day. 
they go so hard. They make the Jewish jokes, black jokes, like the, the craziest stuff you've ever heard. The most like offensive thing that could be said. They really, that was like, a, they'd had a, a hundred of those. And that type of humor is so far gone right now. You, you, you've got to remember, I know you remember this. I know both of you do. And I've said this for a while. This would actually help cure the world. And I don't know who the hell has to go and make this happen, whether it's Colin Quinn himself or somebody, but tough crowd. You cannot find anything but obscure, small little clips of Colin Quinn's tough crowd. The people that they brought in on those couches, the comedians from Patrice O'Neill uh, to, I mean, it, it was everybody. And you want to talk about going hard, just like those roasts. That was such an amazing show and everybody got it equally and it is just so hard to find anything from that. I, I don't know. If there was a box set, DVD, I don't care. VHS, I would still buy it right now. I'd buy myself a VHS player just to watch that shit again and then digitize it for the world. But I, I'm with you on that. Those roasts, and I would add Tough Crowd onto that list. Yeah. Um, also, for the uh, member of the Maxine, uh, the Maxine documents came out and they were supposed to come out in 80 years, but they ended up coming out like a couple months later and they were talking about some of the not so good parts of the Maxine. Yes. Uh, so that was one too, but we can't, we probably can't go too deep into that. <laughs> well, hey, hey uh, yeah, 75 years they wanted. Yeah. And then we started getting in dribs and drabs. And the first 12 pages from like only like the, the I, I, it was like the first 12 pages like, is like, whoa, <laughs> spontaneous abortion. Uh, you know, it's just crazy. I, I, it's how Actually, that's incredible right there. Um, how much more have we gotten? It, it, was it was it court order that the rest should come out quicker or, or is it still that 75 still the standard? I don't know. I just know we got those little uh, t those little leaks of it. I know, and they're terrible. Yeah. Shit. Okay. That that's monkeypox went away pretty fast. That was a good one. Uh, no. They kind of had a problem there, and then it was just kind of actually no more monkeypox. No more monkeypox. They gave people a shot, and then the UN, the WHO, came in to correct to correct the name of monkeypox because they believe that it was very racist. So now, actually, you saying monkeypox is a is a a retrograde offensive medical term it is actually called m pox and it's m. so funny that they say oh it's racist it's like can you explain it <laughs> can you explain it to me because like, i wasn't making any connection and then like, you have to go out of your way to say like why it's racist and then it's almost like well this right here that conversation might be the problem <laughs> uh waukesha christmas parade remember the guy drove into the people that went away as fast as possible yep yep that was a good one. It was the car's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, I watched that guy's trial because he represented himself. I saw a little bit of that too. Oh yeah, he was a he was a crazy guy. Yeah, real nuts. cuckoo. He was nuts. Yeah, that was last year or 2022. Oh, uh, my time that was all fucked up. 2022. Okay, the, the wait the the trial or the or the the the, the tragedy. Oh. But the the incident itself, I believe, was twenty twenty. Maybe it was twenty twenty one. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, th that's that's another one. Okay. All right. Uh, the ozone layer from back in the day. Oh. Yeah. yeah the ozone layer, and you can't spray the spray cans. It grew back. It hits the ozone layer, and then there's like a huge circle going around as zapping people. Yeah, we were wondering whether or not we were going to be in the eye of the circle, the hole in the ozone layer. I remember that. I remember getting that from like 1990 in kindergarten until about 1992, 93. Then all of a sudden, the hole in the ozone layer. Nobody talked about it anymore. Just like just like crop circles. Crop circles were huge in the 90s, and I'm sure they still happen somewhere. And I'm sure 95% of them are still completely uh, hoax, local hoaxes or whatever, but gone. Gone are crop circles from, from all over. The place. And you would think that there would be a little bit of crop circles in the news, especially since, since, um, since December 2017, UFO soft disclosure has been so huge. No crop circles. Crop circles is a good one. 
Um, Stop Asian Hate, that only lasted like a month because they kind of had a problem with who was doing all the Asian hating. It's true. It wasn't, it wasn't good for them to look at, it wasn't good for them to be like, oh, we caught the guys, here they are, and we keep letting them go, and they keep doing it. Yeah, it so was, they didn't really have a good like narrative spin for that, so they just dropped it. It was all, it was all their, uh, their, their, uh, their competition in pre-med school. It's all the pre-med competition. <laughs> yeah, that's why they were so mad. <laughs> oh. I could have been top uh, of my class. Uh, there was like a story this year, I mean, it was last year, I guess, where the pilot got ejected from his plane and then like the plane was never recovered and we thought China stole it. Whoa. Oh. It was like a fighter jet pilot. He got ejected at like full speed and then the plane, I think, wasn't recovered. It may have just crashed, but I thought the whole thing was like the plane never got brought back. It was, an F China stole it. It was one of those F-35s, right? I think so. And that was when it was like another F-35 incident happened where uh, it was an unmanned plane maybe that went rogue or they lost control of it. But we had some F-35 problems like a year ago that we kind of never got a resolution on. Yeah, no, I, I remember this. You know, I had a couple here. I'm going to throw a couple more. Here's some from my uh, from my audience. Uh, the Nashville Christmas bombing. You remember the one like with, with the mail right outside the post office, something like that? It, mm. it was in Nashville. It was It was Christmas morning blew the hell up there were so many things that were going around going on around that one maybe two days worth of headlines and just gone you don't hear anything about it um you have this the Pro uh, brooklyn metro mass shooting this one's from juliet is lurking uh the Mo uh, miami mall aliens we're talking about that maui still so much uh, i know people in maui still try to get some information out but you know the interest has just I hate to say it, but it just dies down because they 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 match tragedy so quickly, and you you get pulled to the next lily pad, and you're just jumping from one foot to the next. You know, you can't even digest something for too much longer. But there were so many missing people and children that were reported out there in Maui, and we never got anything out of it. We did get some uh, really interesting thoughts about the blue objects, though. Yeah, even from Joe Biden himself. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Yeah, did you hear him? He did that twice where he kind of was like going off the cuff and said, oh, those houses with the blue roof. <laughs> I know. Do you think that someone told him that that's what happened or like, oh, sir, there's a conspiracy that if you have the blue roof and then he just heard it and repeated it like. If you know. if you were to give me those two options, knowing his level of mental, his 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 mental capacity at this point, I could only ever think that it was a slip of something Something that somebody told him that he probably should not have said anything about. Um, because I don't really, uh, I, I can't reward him the capacity for that kind of, you know, uh, quip. You know, the 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 the, uh, the humor to be able to go and pull that out and kind of taunt conspiracy theory. I, I don't know. Unless it was written down for him, which it wasn't. It was just kind of ad libbed yeah, and exactly. weird, you know. So not written down, and then you know his handlers are going, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. please. Uh, Las Vegas shooting. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. That that it was literally just stop asking us. We don't know. One year later, the FBI said we'll never know why this happened. It, it just literally stop asking us. I mean, this is just that's incredible. Yeah. And then what was like the extent of the footage that was released? It was like the it's like, casinos are the most surveilled place maybe in the whole country. And then you get like one shot of him in the elevator maybe with the with the with the with the trolley and the bags. Like is that all we got from that? Yeah. That that's all we and got some, officially. Uh, when they I guess when they breached the door, I saw footage of that too. And then the guy went on Ellen and left. Yeah, they memory hold that pretty good. Yeah, the Ellen, the Ellen DeGeneres uh, bit that was absolutely ridiculous. What, what do you mean Ellen DeGeneres bit? The the security guard, the security guard. You, you remember he disappeared for for God knows how long. Everybody was trying to t find the security guard that had uh, either um, had confronted Stephen. Uh, What's his name? Paddock, mm -hmm. or um, and. Um, Whatever the hell they were putting so much emphasis on the security guard's role in the in the shooting or the timeline of events of the shooting, and of course he granted one interview, one interview only. It was on Ellen DeGeneres before she was, uh, you know, shoved out of the public eye, and and then away he went again. 
And from there, it was nothing but weird, weird stuff with uh, Paddock's brother coming out saying that this definitely wasn't him. Then they planted child porn on Paddock's brother's thing. The whole th- the whole entire incident boiled down to bump stocks. Um, though there was so much weirdness around that. The, uh, it it, uh, it reeked of weapons deal. It reeked of so much. And, um, and we'll never know. Never know. Um, here, yeah, here, here's another one. Shinzo Abe's assassination in 2022. Yeah. That's a really big one. That was like one day of coverage. Seriously. Seriously, that was a holy shit. Yeah. Abe, the, the guy that Trump fed the fish with, he's dead. And then it was, that was just the last of it. Um, perhaps there was a little bit more intimate coverage in Japan. Maybe somebody can can expand on it. But over here in the States, there was... There was really nothing, and that that was caught on tape. That was weird. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's see here. Waukesha's in here. Uh, Fleckus, you have anything else? Uh, on the sixth of January, uh, the president made a video saying "Remain peaceful and go home," and that got as unseen as possible. Yeah, because that's like the whole thing is like you can just play that video and go, well, there's no insurrection. Here's him on a public platform to his whole audience that he's been talking to all day saying, hey, guys, respect the police. Get out of here. Uh, so that got that was as memory hold as possible. No doubt about it. Uh, there's a lot memory. hold. I mean, even even more too when we when you see what was just uncovered with Liz Cheney um, and, and other uh, members on that committee. Just hiding, exonerating evidence, high, squirreling things away. Uh, every time that there was another uh, phony investigation that Adam Schiff or somebody was leading, it was always anonymous whistleblowers, people, you know, uh, a campaign of whispers, things, uh, it's sensitive information that are being put together in a skiff. Nobody should know anything about it. I wouldn't say that that's memory hold. I would say that that was uh, just never... There's never anything of substance to begin with. It's just always, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many levels of, of uh, chicanery here that's going on. Um, there's another one. Let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a good one. After the after Maxine was rolled out, uh, there were stories from the audience about people that they knew had com- who had complete and sudden personality changes. I remember, oh, I remember that. that. I remember that. That, that. So listen, my my so and so, my uncle, my brother, my my parents. That there was quick. Uh, we're not talking about sore arms. We're not talking about you know uh, you know flu like symptoms or anything like that. We're talking about they seemed like the light of God had been just squeezed out of them, and um, and uh, well, this person, this person, Marcia actually wonders uh, if any of those people were ever recovered or got back to normal or were the changes permanent. I would love to get some follow-up on that. That's right. That's a... That's a good one. I never even heard that. I heard about it when it initially happened, but, yeah, I'd like to know. Same with people who lost taste. Like My brother-in-law lost taste for, like, over a year. I wonder if he can taste any more now. Mm. I hope so because that's like that's like half of life's main enjoyment is eating stuff. It's so true. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, another person over here, the Jewish tunnels. Some of the imagery coming out of that one was wild and poof. No answers. No one talks about it. Um, and then, oh, this is a big one. The missing fertilizer from the train derailment. Oh, yeah. That whole train derailment in general. That was last. That was early last year. We're talking. And hear it here. I got this. Uh, got a link over here from them, too. New York Times. 30 tons. 30 tons of explosive chemicals lost during a rail shipment, not a derailment. Ammonium nitrate, relatively harmless by itself, but has caused deadly explosions in industrial accidents and has been used in targeted attacks. 30 tons. Never heard another damn thing about this. It just disappeared. This is a massive shipment of stuff. Uh, it, where the hell does it go? You, you can only, if it's only on the train tracks i mean it's like where 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 do you go you you can't go off-roading with with this thing it's on tracks yeah how do you even have the capability of like pulling that job off it's like a derailed train that you're gonna get to and then unload 
I don't even. And then it's the same thing of like we've seen in the past where then there'll be some terrorist attack in the next five years. They'll use a ton of that. And maybe people will make the connection. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll only have needed uh, one of the 30 tons in that respect. Uh, uh, Fleckus, you want to do one more before we go to intermission? Gay Senate text, uh, gay Senate sex tape. Oh, my oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm doing my part in rewatching it every day to make sure they don't <laughs> yeah. memory hole that from me. I just want to make sure that nobody forgets Someone's that. memory hole that. <laughs> I watch it every day. <laughs> <laughs> he's, do he's, he's doing hard hard dirty work for us all thank you fleckus wow <laughs> you know you know that is just it's incredible because you're right uh it is such a a moment of complete desecration on, on such the supposedly hallowed grounds i mean january 6th you remember you remember ladies and gentlemen january 6th was yeah they, 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 they desecrated hollowed grounds. They desecrated yeah. ho hollowed, hollowed grounds. grounds over there at the at the Capitol. But you know, butt sex in the Senate chambers. Um, Disgusting. It, yeah, and it led to what? It led to the revelation, very subtle revelation, that this was. I mean, who knows uh, if it was um, if it was some kind of. I think uh, he had some kind of. Um, backwards what was considered backwards opinions on the palestine israel situation and the relations between those two people so i think that uh, some people thought that this was released as revenge but re whether or not it was released as revenge or held up to kind of btfo him and get him out of the, the situation the fact that this was recorded for the purpose of being shared in a private discord or whatever the hell it was of uh, 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 of gay um, you know, Capitol Hill staffers that only share sex-related stuff. I don't know if they're just doing dare. Hey, where where can you have sex next on Capitol Hill? But, I mean, they, they reference a network, a social media group of people who are recording themselves in sexually compromising positions and sharing it with each other. That's like a – that's incredible that, that everybody just glossed over that. Yeah, glossed over it, and then you don't know. I don't know any of the people's names that were involved. I don't know who they worked for. I'm sure the info's out there, but like you'd think something like that would be all over the place. If it was obviously a right wing person, you'd know it was so and so's office. He's stepping down. Everyone got fired. But this was just, eh, just some twinks going crazy on each other. I know. I know. Yeah, there you have it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have Fleckus stay on with us for another couple of minutes on the other side of the intermission. We have so much more, and then we're going to take your calls. What the hell has been memory hold and any other Friday thoughts that you may have? Fleckus, I'm going to put you on uh, mute real quick. You enjoy yourself. You have about two minutes to, I don't know, stretch. Watch that uh, Senate video again. Make sure that's it's <laughs> <laughs> Make sure everything's in the right place, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, everybody. Quite frankly, TV or pilled.net. We will be right back. The rest of the show is available exclusively at pilled.net. Follow the link Man, in the description watch that of video. the episode. Get signed up. It's that easy. Or head on over to quite frankly TV. Just press play. No paywalls. No censorship. No strings attached. So head on over. Quite frankly TV. Powered by Foxhole and pilled.net. It's intermission time, folks. Time out to press the like button. Thank you. Ladies and Welcome to intermission. We'll, we'll be right back. Ah, 
now entering, quite frankly. 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 We all support. Quite frankly. Not quite. Quite frankly. Let's go, Brandon. Quite frankly. In Roma, Italia. Quite frankly. You're going on Frank's show tonight? I want to get a Coke. Can I get a Coke? So everybody watch. Quite frankly. With Frank. Quite frankly. How dare you? All right. Okay. So, man, oh man, we are back. Welcome, let me unmute uh, Fleckus over there. We're doing good, we're doing well. All right, so... Let me see here. Where the hell did I put all of my... There's that. Where is all my notes? Oh, there it is. Okay. So we're talking a little bit about memory holes. We're talking about memory holes and um, a little bit of corn holing. And then there's this. I want to get a couple of su uh, super chats in the mix. Thank you to Stostube for being out there. Jay Britt says, good evening, Matt. Welcome back, Fleckus. So that's from Jay. Uh, over on Rockfin, we have a couple of tips from Ellie. Thank you. Two from Ellie and one from Nighthawk. Nighthawk says a little Hawk. something. Hawk! I have to. There's a guy in town here. He's the Hawk. Who? Joe Sal is the Hawk. Oh, okay. Well, Nighthawk is in the chat room. He's says just he a regular Hawk. He's not a Nighthawk, though. Oh, all right. Well, this guy's. He's Nighthawk. And he said, oh, here's a little something to help power the lava lamps. I know. Well, this one over here is just starting to bubble and gurgle a little bit. And again, it's because winter came back in New York. And I put these on four hours before the show starts. And still, it takes until about 8 o'clock for this one to get kicking. So, I mean, I don't want to... Uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, Fleckus, do you have any... What's your favorite light in the house? Do you have any lava lamps, anything like that? What, what, what's the room that makes you most cozy? You know, I I had a lighting issue uh, for a while. I used to just like, like, bright LED overhead lights. Oh. And then, like, I think someone came over to my house and was like, this feels like a hospital. Is it too... Like, it's sterile or whatever. Like, I liked it so bright. It was almost like a bluish-white light. Terrible. So I got rid of my overhead lights, and I used a, a salt rock lamp now. It's mm. called a salt rock lamp. And it's like this orangish salt rock, and the light goes through it. That's what this and pyramid reading, is. What would you say? Oh, that's, yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. Oh, nice. But I'm reading about how, like, lighting is actually really important for your circadian rhythm and then your body like needs to see certain light um, from the certain light spectrums throughout the day to know what time it is and to sleep good and your whole body kind of runs off it. So I've been more light aware lately and I got rid of the LED overheads. That's good, man. I mean, I, the thing with me is I've had a hard time finding really good incandescent light at the, at the, the brightness I'd like. And in the last couple of years, LED, which used to be just horrible, as far visually horrible, but um, they have really gotten down to, <clears throat> they made some really good soft white glow lights now, which I, I, the fact that it's still LED, there's still the whole question about frequency and whatever the hell it's emitting. Um, so incandescent is always my, my favorite, my go-to, even if you do burn, melt your entire hand off, if you go to touch it a half hour after it was on, but, um, <laughs> that's what it, that's what it is. It keeps you warm, those incandescents. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's good to be aware of lights though. Apparently there's more to it than just lighting up the room. So good to know. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. Let's see here. What else do we have on the, um, we have a couple of super chats on, on Rumble, Mike Rogan says, greetings, Frank, Matt, and God bless you. Captain Wiggles says, happy Friday, Frank, Matt, just a little humor. Why shouldn't you ask Yoda for money? He's a little short. Oh, got us. There's uh, a guy at work that tells uh, like jokes like that. 
Yeah. And well, he told one the other day, he said, well, uh, I was telling a guy, he said, you know, he was going to eat his watch, but then he said, figured out it was too time consuming. <laughs> 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 and sometimes, if you deliver it the right way, it's hilarious just because how dare you give me that joke? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Brew Bark in uh, Gold Pills over there on Quite Frankly TV and Pilled says, again, 30,000 tons. No, 30,000 tons. No, it's 30 tons. <laughs> Of ammonious night, uh, ammonious ni- ammonium nitrate that disappeared in the Mojave Desert went off the radar in record time. Yeah, it's thirty, th- it's thirty tons. Thirty thousand tons is ridiculous. Thirty tons is ridiculous. But we you lost it. Yeah, you know we lost a nuke, right? God knows how many nukes. Oh, there's one definitely somewhere in the ocean. Oh, you're talking about the nuclear submarine? No, a bomb. The airplane that crashed? No, I, I don't know if it was an airplane that crashed, but this is like from back in the fucking day, bro. I think I know what you're talking They're about. They're transporting, I, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe three bombs or something and or some shit, and one fell down. The Russians and the Americans were looking for it for like 20 years. And didn't they have the video of it trying to take off off the... I thought it was... A, they are trying to take off off of a... An aircraft carrier, and then it crashed in the ocean. Is that what happened to it? Recovered. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Something this was like that. Like the Cold the, War. I think it was in the Bermuda Triangle too. You know, whatever happened to the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, that's another one. The, it, yeah, here's the, the you know the Bermuda Triangle. Is that one of those things where the energy meridians and and ley lines of the Earth shift over time? Like people always said that there was some sort of a well, they, a magnetic tri- triangulation there or something that created all of this I this saw chaos. That, and then I saw another thing where they think that it's coming from the floor of the ocean. That whatever like gases or whatever the fuck it is is coming and it's breaching the water. And it's causing something in that air that's that's doing it. But there's also there's another smaller triangle too, besides the Bermuda Triangle. Uh I think there's one like off the coast of Florida or some shit. There's like one of those where like shit will happen weird and sh- people will disappear. You ever hear about anything like that down there in Florida, Fleckus? Not Bermuda Triangle related. But I did read something about the Bermuda Triangle the other day. It was obviously a little more conspiratorial, but it was like there obvi- there exists multiple realms at one time on the earth and in different realms different things are happening and then in the Bermuda Triangle is where the devil's throne is. Hmm. But uh, that could have been a boomer it's a boomer Facebook post. Yeah, it could it, it might enjoys have been. the nice weather there. But you know listen uh, Bermuda Triangle just like crop circles gone. Yeah. And, and that's not to say that it I mean if people if vessels and airplanes are still going missing there you'd think that that kind of a pattern would be would be uh reported on uh maybe it still is i I gotta gotta look into it or there's something changing in the earth and what was once a troublesome little patch of of uh of ocean up until a few years ago has maybe shifted a few miles to the west or something like that I, i don't know um here is another one the one that i've been i've been told you I, I've been thinking about a lot lately was the TWA. Which now which one are you talking about? The Malaysia? T, no, TWA eight hundred when which, we were it, it, over oh, Long in Island. Long Island. Long yeah, Island in bro. 1996. Now we just did a five hour flex were you living in New York in ninety six? Yep. Long Island. Okay, so this was this was local news for you. Mm-hmm. Now We just had a five-hour TWA 800 Art Bell Marathon on the After Hours last night on QuiteFrankly.tv, and it's pretty incredible because I had heard all of these episodes one time or another, but put these segments in order, it was incredible because it started out in 96 and 97 with the initial theories of a, of a missile, uh, No one, but no one would ever have suspected friendly fire in the 90s, so it was just all about terrorism. In fact, there were some, uh, I think even some callers were, were talking about whether or not it could have been Cuban terrorism, no less. Cuba. Cu- no, Cuban. Cuba. Okay, oh, yeah, Cuba. Yeah, so 
it, it's just crazy. I think they shot it down with like a rocket launcher. So They're, I heard that theory too. Like I heard, I don't know if it was Russian or maybe it was the Cuban, but I heard like, oh, terrorists may have shot it down with the rocket launcher. Yes, they're talking about whether or not handheld handheld rocket launcher RPG or anything could have gotten this thing because it's a major target. It's a 747, and it was only about 13,000 feet in the air at that point. But um, But here's the thing. When you listen to all of these broadcasts like we did last night going throughout the 90s, it is so stark by 2015 when on Midnight in the Desert, it's August 19th, 2015, they brought on two guests, uh, Art Bell did, Jim Sanders and Bill Burns. Not, it is conclusive at this point. Not only did the Navy accidentally shoot down, this is, a, this is an AI malfunction too, a submarine or something over there in in um it was all um surface to air uh missile air defense kind of stuff the navy shot this thing down not only did the navy accidentally shoot down a 747 over new york and killed everyone on board over 200 people the government went into full fbi and cia went into full cover-up mode which included altering hundreds of witness testimony to match, their, to match their ridiculous spark in the fuel tank story. That was 100% military malfunction. And they completely, no, there was never a time where the public was allowed to be outraged about this, ever. And, um, and I saw, I actually, after last night, I had to go and check out uh, accountability, whether or not there was compensation. And I found this article from 2001 right over here flight 800 settlement reached july 13th 2001 the families of 19 people who died when twa flight 800 exploded five years ago will re will reach 2.5 receive 2.5 uh million dollars each from boeing and twa under a settlement now i wonder especially knowing how deep in the pockets of the american government and vice versa boeing is if this this money the settlement was passed through, I don't even think TWA is around anymore. I mean that's the that's the kind of thing that ruins an airline when you tell the whole public that there was a spark in the in the fuel tank and everything just blew up. But uh, I, I have to imagine that there was some money that passed through Boeing from uh, some of those contracts they have with the the government because it was a full court press to put this thing into the dustbin of history. It's it's incredible. You got to look into that. You got it. You really I do. I remember that. I remember. I'll that. check that out. I didn't know. Idea. Well, I knew it was. We shot it down, but I didn't know. Uh, it was back in the day when you know someone in the Navy messed up, and then the boys come in, and the FBI and CIA go, "Hey, don't worry about it. We'll cover it up." Well, it must have been good. Now yeah. the FBI and CIA lets everyone into the country and doesn't starts the things. Indeed. I'm trying to remember <laughs> so something. Uh, Nine eleven related too. Besides Building 7, uh, wasn't there something else, some other bomb scare going on the same time on the George Washington Bridge or some shit? Or or they or the police pulled over some certain type of people and, and something fucking weird? Yes. Hap, do you recall what I'm talking about? I, I, I remember something about there being an, a police apprehension near the GW. I don't know if it is at all related to the dancing Israelis uh, story. Um, I, I, I really, I don't know. Um, but I do remember something like that. I also remember uh, uh, on September 11th when, you know, we were just pasted to the television screens. And this was, this was late afternoon now. I remember late afternoon of that day, I think, uh, I think Building 7 might have already gone down, but there was reports of, um, of you know, bomb scares and threats in the Empire State Building. All of a sudden, we're all watching the television. We're waiting for the Empire State Building to just go up in flames or something. You know, uh, that was a bomb scare. That wasn't like a, another, because by that point, all the, all the planes had been grounded for hours. But there was a lot there, man. Yeah, TWA. There was a, par there was a thing in 9-11, too, where there was, like, a parking lot um, on the Brook on, in Brooklyn, right over the bridge um, off of the southern tip of Manhattan. Uh, and I think the parking lot had, like, 100 cars in it, but then they were all weirdly burned. And some were, like, burned only on, like, one half and the other half wasn't. Um, yes. So it... So if you, if you believe in like a direct energy weapon theory, it's almost like the first shot they did was not on it exactly. 
Um, but that's not the theory I believe anymore. But there was a weird parking lot where all these cars were like strangely burned, but not in a standard way um, of like how a car would go up. It was almost like. It looks Electrical, like it looks weird. like the cars. It looks like all the cars in like Paradise, California, during all of the the, the wildfires. Exactly. And there was no fires in the streets at that point. I mean, there was falling debris. Maybe I remember. Uh, you know who who really accentuated and highlighted that phenomenon was Dr. Judy Wood when she oh, did, yeah. yeah she did that. Um, where, you know where did the towers go? Uh, presentation, and that was a really interesting part of it as well. Um, as far as far as uh, planes go and all that other stuff, there is also uh, the doomsday plane on nine eleven. No one fucking remembers it. I I I, rem I swear to God, I remember watching it live. It was on. There was a fucking white plane just f flying in circles, like in the distance, but it was on the TV. No one fucking remembers that. Oh, I swear to God, I'm not crazy. I remember that shit. But but could it have been? No, it was military. Dude, it was a that? plane. I remember seeing it the whole time. That's why, like, even that day, I'm like, yo, this wasn't, this isn't what they're saying happened. It didn't happen like that. When you say even besides that, there was something else uh, in the sky too, uh, while that plane was flying around. But dude, it was a, a unmarked plane flying. Good off in the distance, but you could see it on the live news TV. You're gonna have to find this. When, and what do you, uh, when you say doomsday plane? What do you mean? The doomsday plane. That's like uh, I, I. Is it the plane with the big radar dish on top of it? No, no. It's I, I'm not sure. It's it's a thing. Like though. a B-52 bomber. No, I, I don't yeah. know how to tell you, but I know it's a thing. I know it's definitely a thing. You're gonna have to find it. You have to find it because I don't. I don't. I mean, I'd I'd like to know what you're remembering. I really would. Uh, the, uh, here, here's one. Uh, the USS Liberty, Israeli IDF destroyed the Liberty and killed the entire crew in the '60s. I have a book on that that I still have not read. I have got to read it in between book club, uh, book club titles. Um, let's see here. Oh boy, we did the TWA the Finders Cult. That's pretty. Oh, what about this one, Fleckus? We're gonna do a couple more, and then we're gonna. I want you to let us know what is going on with you for the rest of the the month and into the spring. The A1 brothers. Speaking the of Pakistan, brother. in the yeah, the A1 brothers. Oh yeah. You had these congressional IT staffers working for Debbie Washerman Schultz. They were really Pakistani spies. They were they they were hooked up in this huge huge uh, used car. Scam. I forget what the hell that was all about, but they were Pakistani spies that were stealing all of Congress's data. And they were also linked to that Project Cassandra thing, the Hezbollah drug trade thing with the DEA was involved. They used the car dealers. I think they're using that for money laundering. And, um, and, and that just went away. Went away. The fact that Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, is she still still around? In? Is she? Yep, with her chunky She should have been out in like 2017 after the first run of all this weird stuff. Never happened. This Dude, is why this is why she, she lost her, her her uh her what was it? She was the What the hell was she? She was the head of the DNC. I think this is when she lost that that position. Cuz all this was going on under her was so terrible. The fact that she still I mean this this should have been uh, we we thought that this was going to be huge in 2017. We thought this was going to be such a big. This is going to be the thing that was going to really cart off a lot of people in chains, and it should have. It really should have. And then that was the first time that we all started saying to ourselves, "Okay, well, nothing happened, so that means that they're definitely making these people talk, and they're they're trying to work them for information to get even bigger fish." And we're just, you know, that's when we were starting to just hype ourselves up. Please, please, you got them on a hook. Get them. But no, nothing. And it's like we had them so easy, like dead to rights, blatant, and then nothing happens. And then it's like, well, if you say something, then you get in trouble. It's just like it, it completely changed the dynamic. And like I quickly realized, especially after 2020 with the election, like they don't care if it's obvious. They're just going to do what they're going to do. And if you call it out, you'll get in trouble. But whether you believe it or not or whether it's believable or not they're running their story they're going to go do their plan they're executing a vision and anyone who stands in their way it's like it doesn't matter if you say hey here's a picture of them doing exactly the illegal thing we knew they were doing they're going to go oh yeah wow and then 
It just doesn't matter anymore. I know. I, I, it's crazy. That's why, I, that's why I'm with you. I'm glad that we... I think that when you came on in December, Fleckus, we had a... We had an exchange that really got, I, th- I think, really got me totally ready for this year. Like, I, I was already, I, we were already going in the same direction, but I, when, when we were articulating our thoughts about coming to terms with what is possible and where we need to start investing all of our hope for the future in and, and what we have to be a little bit more dispassionate about just so that we maintain our sanity and our good humor, I really think that our conversation in December was that that moment where I think I was finally ready to face 2024. I, I, re- I really do think that that was the moment where I was like, all right, I think I've uh, covered all my ba- – we're good. We're good to go. We're nice and charged. Let's do this. Let's enjoy the holidays. Let's let the ball drop and let it uh, – let what may come be. So. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm on the same page. I'm getting revved up and excited for 24, and it kind of follows like the movie script format. Act one is Trump wins, and then Act two is like all time low election. How you know 2020 election happens? How it happened? So we're kind of at an all time low. That's when like Simba leaves and goes out on his own with Timon and Pumbaa, and then he comes back for Act three for the final engagement into. The good guys win, and we're back. So we're coming into Act Three now. If if it is a movie and things do have the potential to go our way, this will be the one where we we take it back. Yeah, it's Return of the Jedi. You know, yeah, yeah uh, that was um, that that middle installment, Empire Strikes Back. That was, <clears throat> uh, I love that movie, uh, but it does end on a down note. You know, Luke, he he was. He was almost, oh, he wasn't killed. Vader wa- did not want to kill him, but he, he lost his hand. Han's in carbonite. They're kind of licking their wounds. Things are not looking good. The Empire is as strong as ever. And then all of a sudden, Return of the Jedi. And I, I, I'll always love that. I think I'll always love that one the most deep down inside. It's, uh, it's a good one. Yeah, uh, Fleckus, what do you got coming up for the next couple of weeks, couple of months? Any special announcements? Give it to us. Nothing crazy coming up. Uh, we're just cranking the show out. The show's been on a roll. We're doing Tuesdays and Fridays now uh, with some bonus land episodes for subscribers on FluxTalks.com. So we do just our Tuesday and Friday hour and 15 minute show and then a 30 minute bonus land. We've just been cranking out on that new schedule now. Um, so I've just been focused on that. Uh, it's a busy schedule, uh, but same old, just making content, uh, doing the show with Richard Rapoy and trying to get healthier in my personal life and, you know, do more fun stuff and have some hobbies, but definitely grinding and getting ready for 2024 election. You you you, out, you still going out there from time to time, clearing out any of those iguanas with the airsoft rifles? <laughs> no, not not yet. But I think I'm going to get back out there soon with Python Cowboy because my since my parents are going to Florida, I'm going to try and go out with my dad and do a, an iguana hunt. I do. I w- I would love to do that. That Wait, when that's you, a thing you can Florida, go down you know. and book an iguana hunt. I showed you the. I showed yeah. you the. Wait, the, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I know. I saw the video. I didn't know you can actually like book that. I just thought like he was boys with the guy and he's like well, going with oh, him for the day. Yeah. Oh shit! Hey, if you guys want to go? That could be a nice group trip. Yo, uh, I mean, I, I would definitely listen, do that. Don't give me, don't give me a reason to to take a take a week and take the show on the road and and drive down to Florida. I will do it. I'll put my family in a car and I will do it. I mean, in, Python Cowboy is great too, and it's like there's a lot of deeper uh, stories there about like conser- uh, conservation in Florida and what's going on with Lake Okeechobee and all the invasive species and stuff it's pretty interesting uh yeah and, and when i when i learned i knew that the iguanas and the lizards down there were were bad like as far as how quickly they replicate and how they get in everything and they ruin things so i i know it's um it's like geese control up here and things like that you've 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 got to be able to control them so when i saw that this was a actual actually really uh, a way of of attaining gainful employment for that, there are people out there clearing out these people all the time, these uh, lizards all the time, man. I and then I saw that video that you went on. I said that looks like so much fun. Oh yeah, dude! If you can, if you do this, you don't even need a license. I don't think the state will pay you for every iguana you kill, and I think for every um, Egyptian goose you kill, I think they pay you for oh. it. 
Then you can sell the meat to people who are buying iguana meat every day to make like Mexican food, like tacos and stuff. And then you can turn the skin, either sell the skin to somebody or turn the skin into your own leather goods and sell that. So it's like nose to tail type thing with the iguanas. Like you can really make a good amount of money at every level and you could feed yourself and you know, it's pretty good business. And it's so much fun because usually with hunting, if I, I went deer hunting once and I just kind of sat there and I didn't see anything and I was probably too loud and they could smell me and I didn't put enough deer piss on me. So, it, you know, and then I went pig hunting once and I made a sound and my thing wasn't all the way forward. So it didn't fully fire. The pig heard me and ran off. So that was like my hunting experience before this. Iguana hunting, they're everywhere, and you can just rip shots. And like, he doesn't scare them away. You can kill that one. You can shoot that one, that one down, you know, 100 yards away. They're everywhere, and the, you take shots all day. So it's like the best hunting experience, in my opinion, unless you're a real hunter who wants to go shoot a deer. Well, I mean, and you have to collect the bodies? Yeah, but there's a dog. Oh, man. So that... you shoot it, and you you either shoot the iguana, and either headshot it and kill it, or it's kind of, like, messed up. And then they release the dog, and the dog goes and gets him and kills him. Well, let me ask dead. you something. Where the hell is it? I just went on your... Uh, it's, like, Palm Beach area. No, no, no. I'm talking about on your on your channel. I went on your channel to find it so I can play some B-roll right now. I... I... I can't find it anywhere. I put iguana down a search term. I put Fleckus Talks iguana in general ter- uh, search. Uh, there's Let me nothing see there. If I can get it to you really, really quick, I think I can find it. Yeah, I mean, text, text, just text me where I should. Maybe unlisted. Oh, maybe unlisted. It's too violent. Is that why? I think it was, and then we just like instead of taking <laughs> the uh, YouTube problem from it, we just put it on like members only. Um, it's okay. Get it. Get it, you got to create exclusivity for the the people who are. Yeah. The 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 true blues out there. You get you have I I have to imagine that your your download your downloads for every episode are must be wonderful cuz you're doing great on Instagram and elsewhere. Uh they're going up. Yep. Uh we have some sometimes YouTube will like age restrict the videos where there's violence and stuff like that. So we've been kind of fighting it out. Um we were getting more views like 6 months ago than we are now, but the show now is better than it was six months ago. So as long as like the show is trending better, I don't really care about the views necessarily. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find it. Well, if you find it, text me and I'll, and I'll, and you, you know, I, you've already given me so much more time than I ever thought you would tonight. And next time uh, we got to figure out, I don't know if it's in May or something, but we got to have you back on and keep doing these because uh, everybody keeps asking and, and it's the new year and new us. But, dude, thank you so much for uh, for everything tonight. And, and all the luck in the world to you guys over there at the best new podcast of all time, Fleckus Talks. It's great to have thank you back, you bro. Good talking to you guys. See you, Frank. See you, Matt. All right. Bye, take man. care. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do for the last half hour, more of your memory holes. Let's jump into it. Now, before we get into that, we're going to take a quick break, and I would love – to introduce a person to you, his name is Jason, and he is a um, he's the host of a show called Strange Paranormal. Okay, Strange Paranormal News. That is what we're going to be getting now. Uh, maybe once a week, a two-minute segment of paranormal news and strange, weird news from our friend Jason out there. And uh, whenever he gets his longer show underway, we're going to take a look at it. Maybe we can get him on the uh, in rotation on the network as well. So we're going to take a quick break. You guys enjoy this uh, this brief from around the strange world. What is up guys, Mike Collins here from Wandering Wolf Productions at Easter Island, and you are watching Quite Frankly. A recent Pentagon report examined government investigations into UFOs since 1945 and found no evidence of alien visitation or recovered ET craft. The study dismissed claims of government cover-ups, stating... No confirmation of extraterrestrial technology. It detailed 22 official programs in numerous international efforts, all concluding UFOs were an alien. Witness claims of secret projects were deemed baseless, often stemming from misinterpretation or unreliable sources. The report attributed widespread belief in government cover-ups to media and online content. The report emphasizes the need for better data to resolve 
unsolved cases maintaining UFOs likely have mundane explanations. So not only is this the government investigating the government, they are asking for more money to do so. 50 killed in anti-sorcery rituals after being forced to drink mysterious liquid. In Angola, around 50 people have tragically lost their lives after being coerced into drinking a mysterious herbal potion to prove they weren't sorcerers. These deaths occurred between January and February near the town of Kamakupa. Local officials accuse traditional healers of administering the deadly concoction a common practice in rural areas despite opposition from the Catholic Church. Angola lacks laws against witchcraft, leaving communities to handle such matters independently. Cases like these are rising, highlighting the urgent need for intervention. Now, does this mean that they passed or failed the test? For Strange Paranormal News, I'm Jason Kupsik. Remember, life should be an adventure. Oh, what happened to the music? Oh, there it is. Hello. That was a great spot. Uh, so nice. So nice. Uh, Jason from Strange Paranormal got in touch with me maybe about a month or so ago. Said, you know, hey, doing this. And I said, hey, what would you think about a, you know, news briefs or something like that? Paranormal news. I said, could you do something? Two minutes. And we did a couple of rounds of stuff. And I told him, you know, new camera angles, adjust the lighting, put a little bit of music bed in there, uh, you know, zoom in a little bit more, whatever. Uh, and I loved it. I loved it. It was it was so nice to include that in tonight. Thank you so much, Jason. And I look forward to more with you. Um, here is, before we get to your calls, because there's more stuff over here, as Matt and I are just hanging out on a Friday night. It's 8.35, 25 minutes before we go into the wet embrace of the weekend but i want to know about your memory hold stories here's one this one is from mike from maryland the alleged nuclear missile launch triggering hawaii air raid sirens blamed it on north korea but theorized to be launched from israeli submarine and officially declared a false alarm saying the system malfunctioned you remember that it was i I think it was during the uh, the um it was during the, the Trump administration. Let me see here. Hold on a second. Let me get to Mike's email. Because he said that there was a picture attached. Mike from Maryland. Let's see. Memory hold stories show. The alleged nuke. Which one is it? Which picture is that? Congressional IT staffer. You know, it's been memory hold a lot. What? The fact that the... The Clintons murdered people. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Oh, this is it? Yeah, like Vince Foster? Guy was murdered. No doubt about it. Here's what he has sent over. Let me see. Here, look. Skunk Bay weather. This was June 10th, 2018. That sounds about right. And what's that? that? That that missile? Well, it it all had to do with Hawaii. And there was a, they said it was a false alarm and all that stuff. That was another big, a big one. I mean, we were right in the middle of the most hope ever. And, and we thought that this was all just thrashing of a dying system, rats that just wanted to evade being taken down and they were going to do everything in their power because they were just losing it. And it just, I don't know, over the time, over time, we just stopped praying uh, for that shit. Here's a little bit more. So, the A1 brothers, we did that. Um, Oh, okay, the Chaz. Chaz or Chop or whatever the hell you want to call it over there in Seattle. Here is an old post. This was sent to me, and I think it was a great thing to just to read off there. This is from the 22nd of May. No, 24th of May, 2022. Here's the post. It was about memory holding Chaz. Chaz. Yeah, you remember that? Hell yeah. 
with their garden. Yeah, a bunch of educated liberals and anarchist children start an autonomous zone. They choose the spot that can support such a structure, a city center. Not to worry, by plow or bolt, we shall provide substance. But no one knows how to plant a garden. The leader, warlord of the joint, is a police informant. Homeless people attack the food exchange. An overwhelmed Redditor cries out for gluten-free food. <laughs> Uh, I, you remember that? <laughs> Overwhelmed Redditor out there. Where's all the gluten-free food in, in, in Chaz? And there was also, like, sexual assault and... Mur- Rape, ra- shootings, was, stabbings. Yeah, it's crazy. It was so much more, so much worse than any stable white society. That, that whole summer was a live-action memory holing. It, it, yeah. What about the police station that Dude. they burnt down with the police inside? Police stations, uh, the firework attacks... The attack on the White House, the Secret Service, they they injured dozens, dude, dozens. We're talking about the number 12 multiplied. Dozens of Secret Service officers, they were injured in those clashes at the White House. I mean, the the things that they they made us forget, they had to make us forget. And what about most recently the Palestinian protesters uh, in the Capitol, right? Every capital. That was fucking memory hold real quick. Anyway, back to Chaz. Uh, homeless people attack the food exchange. An overwhelmed Redditor cries out for gluten-free food. Uh, quits running things shortly afterwards. <laughs> they shot two black kids. Two. Yeah, and then the ambulance wouldn't go there. Yeah, they shot two black kids. The ambulance wouldn't go Didn't there. Didn't they block like, all the roads off like so the ambulance couldn't even get in? They barricaded people out, and they are guarding it with rifles. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, of course, they go and start killing each other because they're they're mentally ill freaks who didn't know how good they had it in the world that they were convinced to destroy. And um, and because of the way that they were running things, the, the ambulance wouldn't go. And then they started <laughs> crying about how the ambulance were racist because the kids <laughs> they shot were black. Stupid idiots. Oh, well, they're so retarded, but they are they're dangerous. <laughs> They're dangerous. They're, it, it, it's dangerous. You know, the, the mentality is dangerous. Not not the, uh, you know, not the people who 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 melt down because there's no gluten free food. Shia LaBeouf's uh, Shia LaBeouf's he will not divide us. Fucking royal. Yeah. Oh, nobody forgot about that. Nobody will let them. It, it's just been old. It's just it's just been a long it's been time. That long. It's been no, a long that's... time, man. That's 2016, last 2016, very early 17. He will not divide us. You know, that is, um, that's a long time, man. Coming up on eight years. I know. Anyway, to finish this up with Chaz, some people tried to tough it out. When crews came out to take their barricades down, with no shootings happening, the removal happens unopposed. All to drive property prices down for the rich people they claim to hate. It's weird. It gets memory hold. Yeah. Um, around that time is when um, people like Catherine Austin Fitz were highlighting for viewing audiences how all of these riots were very conveniently happening in places called opportun- or dubbed and categorized as opportunity zones and crashing all of these properties, uh, the value, and also making the... You know, making the community so unsafe and so unstable, especially to the point that no new business would want to come by, it created financial incentive and opportunity for uh, the richest of the rich that supposedly everybody wants to take down. But instead, they just keep killing themselves in the middle class. They're dumb, but they, they've been bred that way, unfortunately. Uh, it's genetic at this point. Uh let me get into your super chats because I'm sure there's going to be more memory holes there. Thank you, Boys Blanc. Thank you, uh, Chai Possum. Thank you, Witchy. Cave Toad says, is it me or is that lava lamp penis forming? Nope, not anymore. Maybe before. Maybe before it had a penis, but not now. Now we have beautiful golden bouncing orbs the way it's supposed to be. And we only have 15 minutes left of the show. 
So, I mean, on Monday, I'll take a look at the weather report, and if it is anywhere above 55, I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. If it's below 55 into the upper 40s, then I'll have to put these things on around 1 p.m. so that I don't have to catch shit from anybody. Let's see here. Stickman Freediver, thank you. He says, squatters not allowed in Alabama. Welcome to the Redneck Riviera. Alabama, Arkansas. I've had plenty of invites from people. Frank, move your whole family down here. You're more than welcome. And you know the great thing is? I know I would be more than welcome. I uh, I really appreciate you guys and gals and... That'd be great to have the uh, you know a a a, a five hundred acre community with all the best people in the world just hanging out together. Oh, that that would be the most secure, easy to sleep in location. I think everybody has to start thinking that way one day. Thank you, D. Dailed. Thank you, Keith. Keith says memory hold. They dug a fire trench around the Branch Davidian compound a couple of days before the fire. Ah. Yeah. Yep. Tomcat 01NJ. Thank you so much, Tomcat. It's great to have you out there. Witchy, thank you. Brewbark, the, the uh, 30 tons of the ammonia nitrate. Captain Longboarder says, Frank, do you remember that train that had stu- had a stuck wheel and was on fire, and it kept traveling forever. No. for it's still going? <laughs> is it still going right now? <laughs> I got to find it. <laughs> it just started flying away. I don't remember forever. that. Forever. Let's see here. J. Sims says Boston Marathon bombing. Memory uh, hold. Yeah, no, because no. then there was a whole manhunt after that because the kid turned into to John Rambo. Yeah. And he was just this an elite friggin' commando. Memory hold, I, I don't think we, we really... There's a lot happening. And then after that. that, the court case and shit. It was the court case. Of course, it was martial law, the testing ground for martial law. Yeah. We we're seeing that. Everybody, there were... The, the order for everybody to stay home because a 17-year-old armed with nothing but pressure cookers... Like he was, I mean, I think it'd be very, very easy to spot a 17 year old running around with a pressure cooker in his in his hand. And everybody was ordered to stay home, and they were doing, they were going the house to house out there, you know. And everybody was looking at this and going, whatever even precipitated this, nothing is worth this, because it wasn't until everybody got let out from their curfew that they found the kid hiding inside the boat of somebody's backyard, you know. It. It was just little compliance tests. So there's plenty of significant, uh, very significant things to talk about when it comes to um, the Boston Marathon bombing, especially if we talk to our friend the other uh, right before Super Bowl who came on to discuss rigged sports and all that stuff. And he, he was talking about how the Boston Red Sox, the was it the 2013 or 14 Boston Red Sox the year afterwards that they were a complete fabrication just to be able to feed into Boston strong, which I, that is one of the hardest ones for me to wrap my head around. There is plenty to say about Boston marathon, but we got our, we got our fill. There was the day of the bombing. I remember I was coaching. Uh, Then of course there was the manhunt. Everybody watching the metropolis out there get get shut down because of this one kid that was for how long was that was for a couple days right i don't know if it was a couple of days it was i don't know it was at least a day it could have been a couple days but the other thing about that was everybody was tuned into radio um i was i had my i have a 50 radio app not every police department's on there it's very limited but it's at least something and i remember at that time i went in there and I found um, I found Cambridge because it was it was the city of Cambridge, the Cam- Cambridge Police Department. And I'm listening to the the cops in Boston and Cambridge, looking for this thing. And everybody is enthralled by it. Uh, they took the they took the the channel off of my app. I started going on YouTube. What do you know? Thousands of people are tuning in to these streams that were launched on YouTube, UStream all over the place where it's literally just guys putting their their radio shack trunk trackers in there and 
and they're they're turning up the volume of their police scanners, local police uh, uh, um, frequencies, and everybody's listening in. They start getting in touch with YouTube, shut down, shut down this stuff. It's impeding all the police work. The bombers could be listening to the cops, all that. And you, you, maybe to a degree, but I'll tell you what, ever since then, that is when this acceleration toward everybody, um, emergency services, switching over to yeah. digital frequencies started. Yeah. Yeah. My police scanner is almost silent and I don't like it. You know, not that not that I want to know where where the soft spots are so I can go commit a crime, but you know what? That's a public, we pay for this shit. You know? Uh I I think that that I think that that, sh- that shouldn't be that um I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, dispatch should still be public. We hear about all the crime blotters afterwards. It, it, the crime yeah, blotters we hear are published. About a little bit of what's going on. We don't hear about the real shit. They don't want people to freak out. You mean in in our town, oh, dude? There's there's murders that happen here, and they you will never hear about it. Really? Yeah. The cops are telling you this now. No, nah, it's just it's. Well, I'd have to talk to a couple of cop friends of mine. I have one Peruvian cop friend that I can Ask call. Him. Say, hey, man, how many people have you killed <laughs> recently? Um, I should call him up right now. Say, hey, officer. What? <coughs> <coughs> what? Oh, God. Are you choking on cum? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're choking on cum. I can't control it sometimes. They can't control it. They keep screaming. They keep screaming my name. All right. Uh, what was I talking about? Your friend is a cop and about the murders. Oh, 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 oh. The, uh, yeah, the, the days of coverage of Boston. So yeah, very, very significant uh, so, social event, a catalyzing event, if you say, because it was de- definitely prophetic. Very, uh, no doubt, uh, compliance testing, and um, yeah, significant, but not not memory hold. All right, let's see. Let's see what else do I have? Oh well, I mean, I don't know. Say fifty one. Nine one four. Oh, you want to watch a little bit of uh, Fleck is hunting the iguana? Sure. He sent it to me. I found it. It, it is. It is unlisted. Let's see here. It is called hunting giant iguana with air guns in South Florida with Python cowboy. I'm telling you, I want to go down there for that. Uh, oh, I'll by the way, our a bunch of lizards. Our friend, um, our friend Timothy Gordon was on with uh, Tim. Tim Pool today. Was he? They did a special broadcast for that Tenant Media. I think our friend, our buddy uh, Matt Christensen works on Tenant Media, but I, I guess Tim Pool does a little bit over there too. I don't know if he owns it or what. whatever the hell's going on. He does a little summer stock. I've done a little summer stock. You're very proud of your summer stock. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here you go. Here's the hunting iguana. I want to go down and do this. I got to be honest. I don't want to pick up the dead iguanas. I don't want to do that. I'll do it. I, I ain't going to let a dog get it out because there might be alligators in there. So I'll retrieve my own kills. <laughs> Take a look at this. I can see you doing that, Matt. There you are. Oh yeah. Wow. Got you, son. Ah, come on, get him. Oh. Fire, hold your fire. Get him out of Get him again. Nice shot. Get him out of yeah, get him, Otto. Load up. Good boy. 
I'll be honest, I think iguanas are kind of cool, but then I did some more research, and these things literally will come up through your toilet while you're on there. That is a yeah. nightmare wow. for everyone. And I've seen what they do to pools and jacuzzis. When they do their business in it, it, it literally turns brown. Like, it's, it's a lot of poop. So when it comes to the iguanas, it's not so much what we're killing as much as it is what we're saving. Look at those porn star glasses he's got. <laughs> I mean, it's like 1984 porn star glasses, and the fact that he's the fact that he's got such a, a, a nice tan when he does it, he he just looks so. He's got the Steve Irwin vest on and <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, like like a pimp over here. These things can crawl into your toilets. They can go in your house. They can touch you when you're sleeping. Oh, oh! <laughs> and they go to the bathroom in your in your pools and jacuzzis. It's very disgusting. Hold on, Grandly. Let me bring the monopod down. There you go. Looks like Gimli. These iguanas, they're just shitting everywhere, and it's causing a problem. Well, we have them pooping in people's pools, on their decks, and everything like that. Uh, one of the worst cases I've seen is I was sneaking around someone's backyard shooting iguanas and. They had their jacuzzi going, and it was a straight up shit jacuzzi. It was oh, disgusting. look at that! It looked like chocolate pudding was put oh. in there. You know, it's just bubbling, stinks to high heaven, and uh, I'm sure it was not cheap to fix. I mean, how much shit? Looks like the Willy Wonka chocolate lake. Yeah, I know. Augustus Gloop is probably in there, getting his fill for the day. That's terrible. So now, they, so I mean, so you see, these things are. Are nuts. Let's get to some of the carnage now. I'm sure everybody wants to see them die after they saw that uh, jacuzzi. I didn't think it over there. Might be a good meal right there. Are you wondering today? A little bit. Eat. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Get ready. We're going to get Grandly, wait and make sure your camera's on. Here we go. Three, two, one. Got him. Got him. Nice job, boys. Good job, Grant. Hey. Snaps and builds for the nice. crowd. <laughs> Good boy. Give him a thrashing. <laughs> Look how big they are. That's what you want, right in the ear. And look, you all hit there. You got three shots all in that area. We've got a boat full of snipers here. That's what we want. <laughs> and it's just bodies all over the place. Where are they? Shooting. Get him! Ah! That's a cool. Hey, that's a that's a cool dog. What do you think about that? That's fun. I want to do that. Yeah, I, it's one of those things where I think I I would have to try it out. I at least I. I at least want to see what it's all about. Anyway, all right. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Major Adams in the chat room says one of the best videos I've seen in a while, and it's. I guess it's just a little bit too. It's a little just a little bit too raw of a video, um, because he he unlisted it, and I remember when I went, I put that in the Sunday rotation. I thought I sent it to Matt. I made sure everybody saw it. So like, damn, look what Fleckus is doing. Boy, oh boy. All right, let's see here. Boston Marathon. Cave Toad says, since they read, uh, redefined the word, we should end conspiracy as a word since the CIA invented it. Maybe future truth? Cool. That, 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 that would work. Brewbark says, great to see Matt again. The Clintons are criminals. Never forget. Uh, Matt1776 says, definitely penis forming. On uh, Well, let's see. It's very, very round and bouncy now. There's no appendages coming out of that thing. And I just need a little bit of time. Still very vibrant, beautiful, beautiful color. This one's a problem back here. This one, it is nothing. It does not move. It gets round. It gets round. 
it's round and it's gloopy. It's if if I were to if I were to like you know shake it up a little bit, it it'll it'll gloop around. But it's it does not it does not leave there. I think I might buy another one and just put a new. Like you see that one right next to you, Matt, the red one behind the Death Star. Yeah. Beautiful life out of that one, and that's brand new. This one is the same thing. Look at Matt's right behind the Death Star. That is a it's a beautiful one. It really is. But um, I, I know Matt seventeen seventy six Witchy Poo. Thank you, Witchy. Good job. Thanks, Matt. Now they're getting into each other with uh, the cookie fights. Born Deplorable says, who uh, who won the Super Bowl after 9-11? The Patriots. Yeah, wasn't that the, the first of uh, Tom Brady's, or it was 2000 no. the first? Yeah, no. Or 99? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. That, that timeline of life is so fucked up because of 9-11 and COVID, right? Yeah. Didn't that fuck up uh, the timelines? Well, 9-11 did. That's just life before and after. But let's see here. Thank you, uh, Delona. Matt1776, let's go. Uh, And then, of course, 14229, Ichi. What does that mean? I don't get it. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm going to release the scratching right now. Yeah, I hope you have no. wonderful weekends, and I will be putting together some nice stuff to watch on Sunday night. Next sun, next Holy Saturday into Easter Sunday, we're getting our Easter specials ready. Maybe I'll even put Davy and Goliath in there. I don't know. You just don't know, but we'll figure it out. I appreciate everybody hanging out this week. Uh, Degenerate Dan says, sure feels like our memories have been holed out, but by who and for what? Is it just in our heads? Public memory versus personal memory is the heart of the issue. You know, Dan, that is something that could be discussed for a couple of minutes, no doubt. And um, I hope I remember that for next week. The public memory versus the personal. Yeah, I guess it's just going to degrade. The more people you add to it, you can have somebody that is very diligent in, in, um, in reflecting on their life and thinking very deeply about things and reading and just keeping themselves stimulated and keeping themselves um, sharp, especially in history, in a historical sense. I mean, this is all history. Tend to think that history just happened long ago. History was yesterday. History was today. Um, so there's that. And the, the more you, you get people involved, the more you realize that the average person does not does not really take that much care of themselves up here. And has nothing to hold it against. Uh, Bruiser Brother says the Malheur standoff got memory hold. Malheur. What? I don't remember. That's not ringing a bell. Never heard of it. I will always remember Lavoy Finicum, though. Oh, is that is that with the? Uh, did it involve Finicum? And uh, and the BLM and all that stuff, or am I? I don't know why I'm I'm uh, blanking on that one. Dooku dances. Hi Matt. Hi yep. Fleckus. Uh, remember how we were told that the supply chain was all better now, and we're to believe that. Uh, Pete uh, Butted Judge fixed it. Whatever happened to the recovered Challenger space junk? No one talks about beehive collapses either. Yeah. The, 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 They're the, rebounding now. The bees are rebounding? Because yeah. they, they, were, they were talking about humanity ending bee extinction just about 10 years ago. Bees, bees can't end the world. They, they can't. No, end, they I mean, can't. The, the world wouldn't end. Only God can. <laughs> but the absence of bees would God mean. Is, God wouldn't let that happen. He would want to do it personally. <laughs> Be, no, 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 no. The bees aren't doing this. No, I want to kill them. <laughs> they have, no, no, after this last couple of hundred years, no, this is me. This is all me right here. Those bees better stay the fuck away. I'll kill them. I'll kill the bees. <laughs> all right. Let's see. That That's all. Thank you so much, Dooku Dan. Thank you, everybody. We will see you very, very soon. Thanks again to Fleckus. Um, that's a uh, wonderful, wonderful time tonight and uh, the end of a good week. Uh, you can keep sending me your memory holes. Go ahead. 
We can compare holes if you'd like. And I'll see you on Monday night. It's going to be open lines on Monday night. Great things I'd like to propose to you guys for topics of conversation. And I already know of a couple people who might be calling in to just throw something out there. And I think if they do, um, that will uh, add wonderful magic to the mix. All right, that's that. Have a good night. Matt, have yourself a good weekend. You too, Francis. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Good night. I'll catch you on the flip side. (coughs) (coughs) Sorry. Quite frankly, this film before a live (laughs) studio. It seems like you're choking on coke. I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you to Degenerate Dan and Bruiser Brother, Dooku Dan, Stostube, Jay Britz, all of our gold pillars, to our wonderful Rockfin tippers and our Rumble Ranters. We'll see you on Monday night. I love you all. Be well. (laughs) 